Hi guys, welcome to Beauty My Therapist, the podcast where I vent, you listen, and you do not get paid. Um, so I'm excited about our topic for today. Um, and I decided to wear a turtleneck so I could, you know, look modest. Um, so I, on my Instagram, I asked you guys what you wanted to talk about and somebody made such a good recommendation. They said to talk about, um, sex. A lot of you guys want to talk about sex. Y'all are horny. Okay. Y'all are horny. Um, so a lot of you guys want me to talk about sex and, but somebody really made a good recommendation. They said to talk about sex after you were raised with super religious, um, slash ethnic parents. And boy, do I have some input on that. It's okay. Um, and it's actually funny because I didn't realize that I scheduled a therapy session for myself on Valentine's day. Yeah. You know, my subconscious mind really was looking out for me. She really had my best interest in mind because she was like, bitch, you think you're fine now? You're not. I'm going to pick a random Monday, two weeks from now, and it's going to be Valentine's Day and you're going to have therapy and you're probably going to cry, which I did cry. Yes, I did cry. Um, I also, it's funny I say that because I changed my Twitter bio to, I haven't cried in 1997, which is an amazing quote by the iconic Julia Fox. Like I'm going to get into her. Actually, no, let's just get into her now. I love that woman. I love that woman. Um, Everybody who's talking shit about her can choke because y'all was singing, get that bread, get that head, then leave. Peace out. Like a summer ago, that's exactly what Miss Fox did. Okay. She got that bread, got that head, then left. Peace out. Like she had a blast. I'm, I'm assuming, and she says she had a blast. She's like, she had fun. She got to play dress up with a billionaire. Got to go to a bunch of fun places and do a bunch of fun things. So, you know, she saw the opportunity and she took it. And I, you know, I hope for every woman who is approached by a heartbroken man looking to give a big ex, like big fuck you to their ex-wife. That's undeserved, probably, because they're a man, most likely. Um, I hope you take advantage of him. And I hope you have a blast on his dime. And I think if we were all ever so lucky to be approached by a Kanye who is just being himself, um, that we take that opportunity and we really get the bag. I really hope City Girls up. City Girls up one. Let's go. Like, I want you to do it. You know what I'm saying? I condone this message, per. Um, In the case that he does something crazy from the time that I post this from the time that I record this, which is February 15th till the time I post this. And I didn't say that. It's take it back. Okay. Um, so anyways, so I said that I haven't cried since 1997, which is a lie. I would have been two years old. Uh, definitely cried yesterday. And the topic of sex came up because my therapist and I, we were talking about like, what we're talking about. We're talking about my friendships and, and how for a really long time, like, we were talking about my friendships and how I really was so inviting to really toxic people into my life. And the funny thing is like, I say that and I stand by that and I literally stick my feet solidly on the ground because I know that I have had moments in my life when I've been toxic and I can own that. I can own that. Um, I know there've been moments in my life when I've been a bad partner, when I've been a bad friend and I own that shit and point out like point blank period where I've been a bad person. And oh, okay. Mm, I wouldn't go as far as to ever calling myself a bad person because I think I'm genuinely good. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever been a bad person. I've never done anything like mean to anybody, like for no fucking reason. But I know that there've been periods in my life where I've been a bad friend, um, where I was defending Cassie wholeheartedly a couple episodes from Euphoria. I take that shit back. She really, she, she, and the last episode, I was just like, mm, maybe not, maybe not, babes. I hit the mic. Maybe not. But um, never been a Cassie. But I, so we were talking about that. And I was like, I don't get it. Because a while ago, a while ago, I was talking to my friend. And I told her, I was telling her like some of the shit that like I'd been through, like with other friendships. And just like talking. And she was like, I don't believe you. <laughs> She was like, I can't believe that you've met this many shitty people in your lifetime. 
And she was like, I just cannot believe that these people exist. And I was like, babes, you're from New York, number one. And the girls that get it, get it. If you've lived in the South and if you've lived up North, the girls that get it, get it. The girls that get it, get it. There is a cultural difference. And literally every time I meet somebody from the North who's moved to the South and I'm like, how do you like it? The first thing out of their mouth is the people. And I'm like, the girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. Um, The girls that get it, get it. Like, I feel like the South is like very passive aggressive. I'm going to get into sex, I promise. But I feel like the South is super passive aggressive in the way they handle people. Like that bless your heart shit, kiss my whole ass. Up North, if you have an issue with somebody, they're like, what's good? What's good? Let's talk. What's good? Let's talk. And I think a good example of this actually was when Miley was when Miley had a lot to say about Nicki Minaj. She was saying it behind her back. And Nikki got on stage and she literally said, Miley, what's good? That is New York. Miley is the South. And then Miley was like, Nikki, it's all love. It's all love for you. It's all love. Yeah, that. Oh, my God. Wait, I just realized that I did not format my camera. Hold the fuck up, bitch. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That really could have been tragic for all of us. But especially me, I would have cried. Probably. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that whole moment in pop culture, Miley was the South, Nikki was the North. So, um, my God, what was the point I was getting to? Yeah. So I, (laughs) my friend was like, I cannot believe that you met this many like horrible people. And I was like, well, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was just like going through my Facebook, like not too long ago. And I found a screenshot of something that somebody posted on my wall and I sent it to her and she was like, what the fuck? And I showed my therapist the same thing yesterday. And my therapist literally was like, what the fuck? And I was like, yes, girl. Yes. Yes, girl. So I think like for a really long time, I, well, not I think, I know I had a really, I had a big issue with earnestness. Like when people were earnest, I ran away from them. I I could never, I could never. I had such a hard time accepting people who were genuinely kind. Because I was like, oh, you don't mean it. Like, you're definitely faking it. And, like, to this day, when somebody's too fucking nice to me, I'm like, what the fuck is your whole problem? Like, I don't know you. You're a stranger. Has known them for, like, seven years. You're a stranger to me. I don't know you. Why are you being nice to me? And they're like, bitch, I'm your best friend. And I'm like, oh, let's reconsider. But... Um, that's something I'm working on. That's something I know and I acknowledge. And I literally have moments where my friends are so tender with me and open. And then I feel myself wanting to leave and pull away. And I'm like, no, we're going to work through this. You're not going to do that. So, um, and I was talking about that to my therapist and she was like, what's like your first memory of friendship? And I told her that, well, I remember that one of my first memories of friendship was, you know, God bless my mommy. Um, she didn't know. I think like you don't know what you don't know. Like in a lot of times, like when you're in a hard spot in life, you just say shit to your kids that you really shouldn't say. <laughs> um, I remember like one of the first things that, oh my God, who, but I remember one of the first things that I remember about friendship was we lived in Rhode Island. Okay. I went to this private school. Yes. That again. Um, I finally made a friend. I finally made a really good friend. I finally made a group of friends. And right when that happened, my mom was like, I want to move to Texas. I was heartbroken. I was obliterated. Weeping. Weepy as hell. Losing it as a wee child. And I guess to calm me down, she told me, she was like, they're not going to remember you. It's fine. That's my first memory of friendship. So ever since then, I was like, they're not going to remember me. It's fine. And, but like that, I think that was her trying to be tender with me. Didn't work. Scarred me for the rest of my life, actually. Um, but when it came to boys, when it came to boys, she was not trying to be tender. Growing up, literally, I remember like having like a middle school crush. I remember not even my middle school crush. I'm so sorry. I remember my preschool crush. My preschool crush for a bitch with bad memory. I really remember a lot of shit. Okay, <laughs> my preschool crush was a boy named Alan. Yeah, we was in Haiti. I went to a little parochial school in Haiti. I've been in and out parochial schools my whole life. I was in a little parochial school in Haiti and we had a little uniform. And I remember he was bald hitty and he was light skinned too. 
I remember that. And I remember, like, having such a crush on him and being like, oh, my God, I love Alan. Me and Alan are going to get married and we're going to have babies. I was, like, six, you guys. Oh, not even. I don't even think I was six. And then I remember that one of the first things that somebody told me was, you can't make yourself too available. Guys don't like women who are available. And I swear to God, I heard that when I was little. And it still haunts me to this day. Every time I try to be honest and earnest, I'm like, you're being too available. You're being too open. They don't like that close it up a little bit close the box up um and then my next memory after that was literally me telling my mom that I had this crush and her telling me um you know if you have sex you'll die and I was like what I was like what do you mean I don't even know what that means first of all I'm a I'm a wee child what is that and she was like, if you have sex, you'll die. You know, I think the issue with like putting or trying, sorry, trying to put the fear of sex into your kid really early, really early. That's super early. I didn't know what that shit was. But now I'm a little curious. I'm a little curious. What are you talking about? You talking about my privets? What is <laughs> what's that like for real what's that like that's a great way to ensure your kid has issues with sex growing up um oh I should have warned that this was probably going to be a graphic episode not graphic in the way of oh I'm so sorry that happened to you I mean a couple of those stories were just like that but um but I I don't mean like there's any mention of like essay or anything like that we're not talking about that okay um so yeah so all throughout my youth all throughout my youth, my mother tried to instill the fear of sex into me. I do not like being told what to do, okay? So I was curious. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna figure this shit out on my own. And you know the funniest thing? I, even though like I was super curious about sex, and like I experimented a lot. I didn't lose my virginity until I was in college. And I think I didn't do that because my mama was a scary beach, y'all. She was scary. She, um, she really put the fear of God in me. Put the fear of God in me. She used to tell me that like she used to try to like, like, I don't, uh, we're not going to get into it. We're really not. She used to like try to put the fear of God in me regarding sex, masturbation, all that shit. Like literally, like there's a scene in the Righteous Gemstones when when the dad is a preacher and he says to his son, he's like, Abraham, you know that when you masturbate, um, all of your dead family members are watching you. They're standing all around your bed and they're watching you touch yourself. How do you feel about that? And the little boy's like, my great grandma? And he's like, yeah, everybody who's ever died and is related to you is standing around your bed watching you masturbate. My mother told me the same thing. And I was like, I don't believe in ghosts. Okay, so good luck with it. Um, right. So it took me still though, I was like really scared to have like a boy over my house because the thing was, even though I like I was like, I know my ancestors are not watching me masturbate, nice try. I know you don't have a PI watching me around the house when you're not there. Like I know you're not spying on me, but the fear of getting pregnant the fear of getting pregnant oh haunted me in my steps because I was like I don't know why but the the thought of getting pregnant as a youth as a youth really freaked me out like I did not want teenage pregnancy I did not want it like I love children I love children and then I hated kids and then I, now I love children again but the fear of getting pregnant literally every sexual encounter I have had in my adult life is Thwarped, thwarped, that's the word, thwarped by the fear of me getting pregnant. Straight up, let me tell you, I'm so dumb, and this fear has such a moose knuckle grip on me that somebody just woke up. This fear has such a moose knuckle grip on me that, as an adult, as an adult. <laughs> I'm literally taking pregnancy tests after a finger bang. That is how much I don't want to get pregnant. That's how much I don't want to get pregnant. And the crazy thing, you know, you may look at me and be like, but you're literally in that job. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. 
I know somebody, and this is a hundred percent a true fucking story. I'm gonna tell y'all a crazy ass story. I know somebody who was engaged to be married with a man. Okay. And this man literally would always tell her about how his his thing was thing. His thing was slanging. So she was like, okay, let me see the thing. Because they were engaged at this point. And she wanted to take it slow and whatnot. So she was like, okay, let me see the thing. And he was like, no, I want to wait till we're married. I respect you as a woman. First red flag. First red flag. You got a big thing and you don't want to show it to me? Questionable. Mm. So he was like, no, I respect you as a woman. I want to wait until we're married. (laughs) Okay. She's not dumb. One day she was like, okay, you're here. Drop trial. Let's go. Drop trial. Because if that thing is so thangin', because he was telling her like, oh yeah, like I've hurt women before. Um, not by my own accord, but because, you know, I'm so well endowed. So she was like, all right, then let me see it. He was like, I'm nervous. I gained weight. Let's turn off the light. Man's had a micro pee pee. <laughs> Man's had a micro pee pee. And no shame to the micro pee pee community. But man's had a micro pee pee. And how do I like even say this without like being graphic? So she found out when they were about to get into it. And she was, he was like, he was like talking himself up. Like he was doing dirt talk. Like, oh yeah, like you like that. You like, and she was like, like what? Like what? And then he burst. And she was like, You've yet to, uh, how do you say, penetrate me. (sighs) She switched that light on so fast. Micro pee pee. She went to take a shower. And then she left. Or she kicked him out. And then she took a shower. Never crossed her mind. Never thought about it. Never even wondered the chance of pregnancy. Then boom, she's pregnant. And she's literally telling the doctor there it ain't no fucking way. Ain't no way. And the doctor was like, there is a chance that while you were bathing, you inseminated yourself. Do you understand my fear now? Why at my grown age? Because if that baby want to be there, it going to be there. It going to find a way. This wasn't even the fastest swimmer. This was the fastest hopper. This was the fastest Usain Bolt. Okay? So if that that thing wants to happen, it's going to happen. So at my grown ass age, I'm taking a pregnancy test after a finger bang. Yeah. Yes, I am. Um, even though, even if I didn't see the wee wee, I don't care. Maybe he touched himself before. I don't know. That's not my business. Well, I mean, it is my business, but I don't know what he was doing. I wasn't looking. So, you know, I have to make sure literally every like encounter I've had, I'm literally like the, the protection has to stay on. I don't believe in having sex without protection. I just don't. Like, I don't care if I'm, like, with you. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I'm on birth control. I don't care if we're together. It's not happening. Because the chances of getting pregnant are just way too high. Like, a 1% chance of getting pregnant is just too much for me. You know? I'm just not ready. I'm not ready to be a mother. Um, But, yeah. So, uh... <laughs> this is an awkward thing to talk about and the funny thing is like I get on the phone with my girlfriends I'd be like girl yeah and then he did this and then he did that and then he did and now I'm alone in a room and I'm like oh my god I'm shy the whore is a virgin she's shy she's so shy um yeah so I the fear of getting pregnant has always haunted me and I think it's also, I mean, it's mostly because I'm not kidding. My mother really was like, if you get pregnant, like your life is over. Like your life has ended. Like if you get pregnant, your life is over. You will never make money. You'll be poor for the rest of your life. No man will ever want you because that man is going to leave you. Yeah. She's like, that man is going to leave you. All that shit. Like literally putting the fear of, of all God, all the gods 
into me. And it worked. It worked. Because as much as I know, as smart of a person I am, I'm literally like, if I look at a man, I'll be pregnant. At my grown age. So that shit, like, I feel like it kind of scars you. And, like, it takes the fun out of sex a lot of the times. Because, like, a part of my mind is always so conscious that I can just never fully let go and enjoy the moment. Because I'm literally thinking, oh, my God, you have a twin brother. If I get pregnant right now, I'm having twins. You're probably going to ghost me. How am I going to find you if you if you ghost me and I'm pregnant? Um, could you afford an abortion? Because that's a concern. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm just like, well, you know, thankfully the men that I've been screwing with are literally like, yeah, if you get pregnant, girl, we gonna go out of state. I don't care. The fuck? And I'm like, purr. Um, that's not anything to purr about. Woof. Um, but, but yeah, so I'm just like, that's a concern. And then, and then it's like, okay, like, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm like, late 20s I'm like okay if I get pregnant this year would I keep it and I'm like oh maybe but then I'm like would this guy be a good dad would this person be a good father is this something is this somebody that I really want to be linked with to the for the rest of my life the answer to all of that has been no all of it has been a flat out no 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 um so yeah, I remember, so I, I, I'm like trying to figure out how to like tell this, how to like plan this podcast out in my head in like a linear way. But so that was my whole attitude on sex was that I was going to get pregnant and die. Um, uh, yeah. So when I was, when I went to college, however, when I went to college, I was like, you know how you get your refund check every semester or quarter when I went to college and I got my refund check bitch I cashed that shit out that was my emergency abortion fund um because I'm super pro-choice like do what you want if you want to have your baby have your baby if you don't want to have your baby don't have your baby it doesn't exist like I really believe in that and I think like it's a woman's right to fucking choose because pregnancy is so fucking dangerous in the first place that to force a woman to go through such a life to go through a life-threatening nine months like that is criminal to me it's criminal and the men who are like that's my kid okay yeah that is your kid and I hope you keep that same attitude when she drops that baby off on your front doorstep and you're a single dad now I hope you have fun and I hope you don't try to litigate with her and try to force her to be in the life of a child she doesn't want to be in. I hope you keep that same attitude the whole way around, buddy, for sure. So when I went to college and I had money to waste and I had like a small job that I do that like gave me even more money to waste that I literally wasted so much money in college. It's not funny. I could have, I should have just bought designer goods with the money, but I just wasted on like small little shit. Anyways, we're not going to get into that. Um, but when I was in college and I had the excess money and I knew that if I needed to get rid of something, I could. I stepped into my whole phase. Full force. It was great. It was great. I had a lot of fun. And I specifically remember the boy that I lost my virginity with. Mm-hmm. He was an animation major, which if you're not an art school person, congrats. <laughs> if you are, you know my shame. Um, you know, my shame, my shame. Um, he had a really, I don't, he wasn't, what was it? What was going on? Okay. Well, this, this getting swim. This getting swim. He was an animation major. So the guy that I lost my virginity to in college was an animation major. Mm-hmm. And he and I had been hooking up for a while. And he actually, I didn't think that this was going to happen to me because one, I very much masturbated all the time. And I was like very active sometimes as a kid. So I just assumed that along the way, like I popped my cherry. I thought that already happened. No, it didn't. And we, we were hooking up one time and he was fingering me. And you know what? I... 
I really should have started this episode off by saying that in my media kit, I compare this podcast to Call Me Daddy, um, or I put them in the same like age range and like all of that. And, you know, this is about as close to Call Me Daddy as we're ever going to get on this podcast, okay? Um, so, <laughs> so this kid was an animation major and I even remember his name. He had a J name. He had a J name. That's why I knew, like, I was fucked up. Um, when I look back, cause you know, the theory about the J names had not come out yet, but if he's a J name, just stay away from him, please. But he was an animation major. And in short, that means that man was a nerd, a nerd. And I thought I was safe with the nerds because I was like, nerdy guys, he should be lucky to have me. No, still a piece of shit. We were hooking up for a while and, and he popped my cherry and like, and through foreplay, that's a great way to say it through foreplay and I was embarrassed because I didn't expect it to happen and it really just fucking shocked me and like I always thought that it was going to be a little bit of blood it was not it was a lot and I was like did I get my periods no I didn't but he was like a really good sport about it so I will give him that yeah one cookie he was a really good sport about that and then um and then like we started talking about the fact that I was a verheen and he was like, well, like, what do you want to do about that? And I was like, I kind of just want to get rid of it. Regrets. I absolutely regret losing my virginity to this guy. And to be honest, I don't know if... Anyways, let's continue the story and I'll go back to this. I regret losing my virginity to this guy. Um, so... He had a roommate and I remember his roommate's name and I love the roommate's name and like I say it so openly, but I'm not going to because I'm not a psychopath. And, um, his roommate knew that we were hooking up and like his roommate, I felt like there were so many times that his roommate just wanted to tell me something, (laughs) but I never, I never knew what it was and I can't even guess, but like I would go to his like dorm room and his roommate, like while he was like doing something, getting something, his roommate would always be like, trying to make small talk. And like, you can always tell when somebody's trying to tell you something more. And his roommate just never spat it out. And like, even when I would run into his roommate, like separately, he just wouldn't, he would like try to talk to me. The conversation would never get far. And then there would be an awkward silence. And I'm like waiting for him to say what he wants to say. And he just never would. I feel like he was probably trying to be like, this kid is a dickhead. (laughs) Don't do it don't do it. Probably knew all of my business too. And I, I feel like I'm, I think, oh, he definitely knew all of her business because it was a dorm. Like if you have, I couldn't have a sleepover in my room with the girl that I was living with. So I probably went over there. I can't even remember, but I feel like that was a thing that happened. Um, but so he, I remember it was so short. It was so fast. (laughs) It was so fast. And I was like, that's it. Like, this is it. This is what the people are ranting and raving about. Because, like, at that point, I think, like, I was in a friend group. And I was... No, there were two of us who never had sex. And there was one girl who had been in a long-term relationship. And then another girl who was just, like, more experienced than all of us. And I think that... Like, not I think, but, like, the girl who, like, was in a long-term relationship. She's like, oh, my God, sex is so good. It's so great. And I was like, I want to find out (laughs) for myself. I want to know. Um, and, but the thing she forgot to tell me was that that shit is really great when you're in a long-term relationship and that person actually takes time to get to know you. Um, like this was before like hookup culture was like a widely spread phenomenon. And I will say that I feel like there is a bamboozlement to hookup culture because everybody's like, yeah, sex is so free. It's so fun. It's so liberating. And it's like, yeah, in theory, if, if you really a hundred percent do not give a fudge what the guys are doing on their end, you can probably enjoy sex. If you a hundred percent can get off with somebody who has no interest in getting you off, you are a, you are a being beyond belief. And I wish I was you. But the thing is for a lot of women, it takes two and the other half doesn't give a shit and they are just using you 
like a sack of potatoes and hookup culture can very much leave you feeling used and also feel you leave you feeling alienated because you're like I'm not enjoying this something must be wrong with me like something has to be wrong with me because everybody else is having so much fun why am I not having fun and I definitely felt like that for a while because everybody else was having so much fun and I was crying all the time I was crying all the time my feelings were constantly hurt the boys that like I just didn't understand like a lot of it like I didn't You know, because, like, the thing that a lot of, I feel like, was in media and, like, a lot of what I consumed, what I understood was, yeah, it's totally normal, which it is, but I'm not saying it's a good thing that it's normal, is that it's totally normal to have sex with somebody before you're in a relationship or before you've even had the conversation about being in a relationship. And that fucked me up. That fucked me up so bad because I... All I wanted was a relationship. I wanted somebody that I could have sex with consistently all the freaking time. I wanted to consistently have somebody that I could connect with in that way. They were not interested in that. They were interested in you when your turn came around in the rotation. That I did not take well at all. So, um, (laughs) so I... Yeah, I was not having a good time. And the thing that, the thing that really like hit me like a rock to the face was the fact that the guy that I lost my virginity with, on the night that I lost my virginity with, he literally, like, he fucked me and then literally, quite literally, flipped me over (laughs) off the bed. Literally, we were spooning. He came, he flipped me over. And was like, all right, cool. I was like, hold on. (laughs) What the fuck? I was like, what? Like, I literally had to tell him, no. I'm so sorry. That was like high-key traumatic for me. You need to cuddle me right now. That was very jarring. I need you to provide some kind of aftercare. And he very reluctantly did it. And I was like, oh my God. And mind you, this relationship quote unquote had been going on for like three months at this point so it quite literally was like we were friends we were doing stuff together we were going out like we were having a blast we had other friends they didn't know we were hooking up but we had other friends that we'd like hang out around we were having a time like we were having a time and then we gradually started hooking up and hooking up and hooking up and working up to it and then we had sex and he was like all right bye That is quite literally what happened. And I was like, oh my God. And I remember I confronted him about it one day and I told him, I was like, why do you act like that? I was like, you literally, we're friends. Like we're supposed to be friends. Why the fuck are you acting like you don't fucking know me? The minute I let you hit it, now you don't know me. And he was like, oh, I didn't know like you cared. I didn't know it mattered. And I was like, and I actually, no, he didn't say anything. He looked at me with those big, stupid fucking eyeballs. And it was only later that he was like, oh, I didn't know you cared. I didn't know it mattered to you. And I was like, of course it fucking matters to me. Like, I lost my virginity to you. What do you mean it matters to me? Like, this was a whole conversation we had. Oh, my God. So, and I remember, I remember that when the sad part about it is I remember I had, because we were friends, so I was in his dorm a lot, and I remember I forgot something in his dorm or I may have forgotten like my ID in, in his dorm because I was always losing my school ID and I couldn't get it. And he, I was trying to contact him, trying to reach out to him. He, we lived in the same building. I, he was avoiding me at all costs. Um, and I went, I needed my ID cause I couldn't get into the building. I was having a hard time getting into the building. And at first I was like, maybe I'll just get a new ID, but I used up my, my, my free replacement and it was like 200 to get a new one. And I was like, no, I had to track down his roommate. And I remember, like, I got a hold of his roommate, and I was like, I don't know what I did, (laughs) but I need to get my ID back, and he's not talking to me, and he was like, it's not your fault. (laughs) He was like, it's really not your fault. Um, And it was really nice, so I will always appreciate him for really being a real one. And, um, And he, he, I think, like, after one of his practices, he let me into the room to look for my ID. And then he was like, it's not your fault. Don't feel bad. It's okay. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> and I was like, you're really nice. <laughs> 
And that's how I lost my virginity. Per. And then I went on a spree. <laughs> like, for real. Like, straight up, like, just doing a lot of dumb shit. I did a lot of dumb shit. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I definitely think that there was a time when, like, I... <sighs> did I care about my safety? No. My care for myself went out the window. My confidence plummeted and I just didn't care like I did not care about my safety at all I could have been killed chopped up murdered dumped into the fucking Hudson River nobody would have ever guessed it because I did not tell anybody what I was doing or where I was going or anything like that and that is such a scary thing to think about such a scary thing to think about like at one point I wholly embraced hookup culture for what it was yeah and that was when I was living in New York for a while and and I was just like I just didn't care I really didn't care and I was like I'm gonna do what I want to do because I'm lonely I'm super depressed and this was before like I made my friends there and after that like I kind of had something to do and like you know to look forward to and to fill my time with that was not filling my sadness with fucking men and yeah I did a lot of dangerous shit like looking back I'm like I hope my child never goes through that because that was scary it was a very dark place but um but after I did that I hooked up with like a couple of like really amazing guys who and I mean amazing like they were good and bad you know what I'm saying this is when my affinity for tall men really kicked into play because the man I lost my virginity with was short (laughs) He was short and thin and I and I realized I had a type at that point because I was like dating these not dating I use that term loosely um I had hooked up with this one guy who was really tall and extremely well endowed like y'all heard that saying did make you crazy it made me crazy like it's str- I was saying crazy shit I was straight I was saying crazy shit. I hope I never, I hope I never, I hope I never again, never again. Yeah. And like, honestly, to this day, I'm not even going to lie every once in a while. Cause this is what happened. Y'all, y'all please. Okay. So this man was, was gifted, gifted, you know? And he, and I, I think the thing that I remember the most about him, which like to this day, I love because it's always a nice surprise, you know, it's like finding a, it's like when you're eating a chocolate chip cookie and a chocolate chip falls on your titty and you don't notice it until like a couple minutes later and you're like, ah, delicious. A, a, a post meal snack, a gift from the universe. He drank a lot of wine um and like he just always tasted like wine take that as you will and and he was tall and he was like tatted and not the shitty tattoos like the really nice ones um or I call them nice but like you know the very aesthetic like sailor tattoos kind of and I was saying some crazy shit he had me digmatized like hell to the point where he blocked me <laughs> to the point where he blocked me and I remember like one time just to get his attention I, I'm so sorry I was nuts I'm so sorry I was like I was like 19 I that was eight years ago oh, no, I don't I'm sorry I can't count that was seven years ago I've grown so much since then but I'm telling you I was crazy I did a lot of crazy shit there's a reason why therapy has really been an impact on my life and I did that and he was like there's no way (laughs) he was like there's no way and then he blocked me and then he blocked me and then um like a year later we made good I don't even remember how we made good I don't I think he texted me and he was like hi I'm in your city and I was like do you not remember the last time we spoke and I don't know if he was playing dumb by saying I but I literally was like do you remember the last time we spoke and he was like no and I was like oh he was like was it bad I was like yeah (laughs) I was like yeah but let's not rehash that 
And he was like, well, I don't remember. He was like, it's been a long year and I've been super busy and a lot has happened since. So I don't remember what happened the last time we spoke. And I was like, okay, sure. And then we hooked up again. And, um, and then I was like, you need to unblock me on Instagram. He was like, I literally don't know how to do that. And I didn't know how to do that at the same time. Cause this was before Instagram, you could look up. I don't know if you could always look up who you blocked, but I think this, I don't think you could. Um, this was before you could look up who you blocked and unblock them. This was when people you blocked still showed up in other people's comments. So if I blocked you and you commented on my friend's post, I could see that you commented on my friend's post. But when I clicked on you, it literally told me that you blocked me. (laughs) This was then. I didn't just pretend like the person had zero likes, zero following, zero posts. It didn't do any of that. It literally just said, uh, this user has blocked you or something to that effect. And so I was like, oh, well, I think you have to like find a post that I liked and or, or commented on. But we had like no mutual friends at the time. So he just never unblocked me. And um, and then uh, and then because um, I was looking at his stuff through a fake account. Of course I was. Why would I not? Um, and then he moved to a different city a couple of weeks later, or not even a couple of weeks later, it was like two weeks later. And he had a whole girlfriend. Um, and I remember like him telling me that like, he was so conflicted in life. There was so much going on. He was so conflicted. And I was like, yeah, no wonder you were fucking conflicted. You have a whole woman <laughs> that you are in a relationship with. Like, and they don't, they look very cozy. I was like, this is not, like, this was an Instagram reveal. So they'd been together for a while. And I was like, oh, okay. And that's when I was like, maybe I don't like hookup culture. Maybe I actually hate this. Um, yeah. So, but you know what's funny? A couple months ago, because I, you know, I'd be shitting. I'd be sitting down on the toilet. And I'm like, I'm going to not mind my business. And I'm going to look up people that I used to mess with. And I looked him up to see if he unblocked me. He unblocked me. He unblocked me. And I was like, should I follow him again? I was like, no, let's not do that. We're not going to do that. So I did it. Um, follow him again. But I see that he has a different, very lovely girlfriend. And I can only hope that he is not fooling around on the side. Because she seems like a very lovely woman. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so that, that really made me like solidify in that I love tall men and, um, yeah, I don't know what it was about him, but like he just fit everything that was my type and I was like, oh, you're perfect. You're literally perfect. And literally every guy after that has been like a mixture of him and the old man who shall not be talked about once again. And that's pretty much what my type has been since and um but this guy this animation guy was not my type and I knew he wasn't my type so when he told me he liked me I was like that's your problem and it's really funny because I told this story on my TikTok live the other day and I got really graphic with it and I told that (laughs) I told the girls that he had a piercing a very special piercing that only a man can get and half of the girlies in the comments did not know what the piercing was. So the joy of my life during that inst- uh, during that TikTok live was what, oh, not the burp, sorry. The joy of my life during that TikTok live was watching the girls leave the live, was watching the girls leave the live because they went to Google it, come back and scream at me. Because they found out what it was and were thoroughly disturbed. And they were like, how could you? And I was like, I could not. That's why that basically ended. And I remember I was so confused that like, because it wasn't long after. Like we were hooking up, we were like hanging out. And then I was like, okay, maybe I do have feelings for him. Let's give it a shot. That wasn't long in between. And what was really a short amount of time in between was me telling him that thing that foreign object on your body hurts and you need to get rid of it and he got rid of it and that's when I was like okay I think I can tell you that I have feelings for you um because you know that piercing is going to close up and you're you're it's going to close up within like two days so that's a bit of a sacrifice so I was like maybe I can sacrifice my pride and tell you how I feel no 
this bitch no and even to this day he keeps following me on social media and I keep removing him and he keeps following me on other forms of social media and I'm just like no and like he followed me he's married with a wife followed me from their joint account and I was like because this is the thing that is a freaky man I was like no it was no 15 minutes ago and it's no now like this is not something I want to explore I don't want to get to know you and like sometimes like people just follow you and it's like whatever but it's like the consistency the constant following like and I was like why are you not what hint are you not getting like focus on your family quite literally um but yeah so that was the thing that happened and I think the thing that like hurts the most about most of just existing and being a woman who has sex with men is the fact that when you do find a guy that's really giving and caring and knows how to treat you as a person um even though that doesn't mean necessarily it's very heartbreaking when all you want is love and then there's a guy who is able to mimic love so well for the time that you were hooking up um but the minute you know you leave it's like you're out of sight out of mind and that's always something that I've struggled with and I think that's definitely why like I cannot I cannot engage with hookup culture is because it's not out of sight out of mind the moment I'm not looking at you I'm thinking about you and it's like I go into a lot of these things like with my heart on my sleeve and it's like babe don't do that like it's very few people this is the thing for me to like be able to have sex with somebody and not feel emotionally connected to them I have to not be I can't stand them I can't stand them um I do if there's there's somebody I don't like not really like they're a man that I've just like looked down upon and like you gross little thing I'm gonna fuck you which is why I don't do it because that's messed up on its own because it's like like my body is a temple and it's sacred and I love myself so much so why am I giving something I love so much to somebody that I despise and it's like for what like power for control like it's not it's not like it's not like liberating and it's like you know you see like these shows and like movies where like women have an orgasm and it's like oh the flowers are bursting out of my head it's like no this is very dark energy and it's like I don't like that that's one thing I will say I don't like about my little Scorpio self is that proponent and but you know I know myself well enough and I have enough agency over myself that I'm like do not engage don't engage don't entertain this don't play with this you should not be fucking somebody you don't like because you can't. Um, I feel like that's like very kind of like a dark soul tie. And it's like, no. And I think like a lot of times like women end up getting soul ties with men. I definitely believe in soul ties. Mm. I said it before and I will say it again. Women definitely give soul ties to men because men are fucking you like that. Like a lot of them are. Like I've hooked up with guys and I'm like, bro, you hate me you hate me like there's one guy like he keeps doing things like trying to get my attention and I'm like the way you treat me you fucking despise me why do you want me like you don't want me like that's the thing let me rephrase that you don't want me you want to say you've had me that you've defiled me that you've dirtied me essentially and I think that's a mindset that like given the right circumstance I can definitely tap into but I don't want to tap into it because I know better because I'm I don't I don't like that energy that's a bad energy and I think a lot of guys don't give a fuck they don't they don't either they fucking mindlessly or they fucking with bad intention and like they're trying to conquer you like right so a lot of men like definitely like when they're it feels like they just want to conquer you like they really do and it's not and it's not like a let me take over and take care way it's like a I want to pulverize you way and I've experienced that a lot like I've experienced that a lot and I think it's because I have such like a strong personality and I get that all the time um and I think like for me as well like I have I teeter between my acceptance of men as people as a concept and between my absolute disdain of them so it's like when I'm in my full disdain mode 
yeah no like I definitely want to conquer but it's just I think you get to a point you know yourself well enough and you know the person you want to be and you know the person you don't want to be and you're like I don't I don't want to do I don't want to do this I don't want to be that girl like I don't want to be that person I don't want to carry that energy because it's gonna come back like that karmic soul tie is gonna come back karma doesn't care about the patriarchy you know what I'm saying karma cares about you as a person and I will say men be suffering uh, and I don't feel bad for them because they do a lot of fucked up shit in their life and then later on in their life they're depressed they're alone they're su- they're suey as my therapist said the other day they're suey and they're just fucking miserable so yeah that karma does come back keep being a fuck boy it's gonna come back I don't need to experience that karma later in life because I decided to fuck with that energy like why why would I do that but my relationship with six now I can't say it's any better. <laughs> I can't say it's any better. Because the thing is, like, I'm not going to lie. And this is something I'm definitely trying to get out of. But I love a toxic man. I really do. And that should be fucking me up. It really fucks me up. Because I love me a toxic man. Men who are assholes, who are fine, who have the money and the arrogance and the, and the, the resume to be an asshole. I kind of like it. But when that shit is directed towards me, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I'm really going to cry. So I've been working on that. I'm working on myself. We're still healing. We're still fixing ourselves. We're still trying to get right with God in the universe. Um, and the worst part is a lot of those guys are all, for me anyways, I can't speak for anybody else. A lot of those guys who just have like an insane amount of confidence and walk with a big stick, they have the best dick. And that makes it harder. That just makes ten makes it ten times harder. And it's just like the assholes always have like the best dick. And I'm just like, maybe that's why like I get so attached to them. And I have no issues letting the ugly ones go or the bad ones go. Cause I'm like, yeah. Mm. Um, but until I get that under control, not even until I get it under control, I just think I'm not built for hookups. I just don't think I'm a girl who's built for that. Like, I really don't. Like, I think I am a girl who needs love. I am. I just am. I'm a girl who needs affection. I'm a girl who needs care. I'm a girl who needs a man who is going to just love me and, like, literally love me like I love my dog like kisses all day romantic gestures all day like emotional vulnerability all day kindness all day humor all day like who's strong and like and is in his wits who walk with a big stick because you know I walk with a big stick sometimes I walk with a big stick and and I just want somebody who matches that energy um, that was the end of the podcast. I really, I was trying not to get full graphic because I'm telling you, I really can, but you know, you have to, uh, you know, you gotta have a bit of decorum sometimes, have to have a bit of decorum. So I was trying to have a little bit of decorum while talking about fucking, well, yeah, while talking about fucking and sucking and all of that shit. And I didn't even get to the sucking portion of the conversation. Um, and I don't think we'll ever get to the sucking part of the conversation, but yeah, so, um, I don't know. I hope I spoke enough about the influence of spirituality or sorry, not spirituality of having strict spiritual parents on how that's affected me and my sex life. I hope I spoke on, I spoke enough about that. Um, but if I didn't, I don't know. We we might rehash this later. We might come back to this and talk about this a little bit later. Um, but yeah, uh, if you like this podcast, share it with a friend, share it with your, Ooh, maybe don't share this episode with your mom or your dad, share it with your boyfriend if he needs a hint. Um, yeah, share it with your best friend though. Do that. Share it with your girlfriends and, um, follow me on Instagram at Vine Philo, V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O and Twitter at Word S W O R D E S. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave a rating and, and a review. Please leave a review. Leave a rating and a review. Um, and if you're following and if you're listening on Spotify, follow, uh, hit that notification bell 
and leave a rating. Yes. Okay. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, le- subscribe, like, and leave a comment. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm really happy to be back. I I think that break was really good for me. And I really enjoyed catching up with you guys this last week. Um, I had a lot of fun and I had a lot of good times. And I can already tell you that at some point in the near future, we will be talking about scammers because I just need to talk about Anna Delvey, the Tinder sw- swindler. And I just read a story this morning about a man who conned $640 million out of movie people in LA. I just need to talk about this, okay? So in, at some point in the future, once I have done my research, once I got everything wrapped up, we're going to be talking about it, okay? We really will. I need to get some things off my chest. But um, but yeah, I love you. Have a nice week. Have a blessed week. I hope your week is easy and fun and fluid. I hope nobody pisses you off. I hope everybody is kind to you. I hope you have the week you freaking deserve. I love you. Goodbye. Mwah.